How's it going guys? It's Travis here. I'm uh, just on my way up to Flagstaff, gonna be getting a, a tattoo today. And I'm just sitting here and I was thinking, you know, I'll just pin up my camera right here and maybe do a quick little video. I've been doing these walk and talks. So today it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a drive and talk. Doesn't really rhyme, but whatever. So, story I'm gonna tell today. Uh, I'm gonna tell a story about when I was maybe 14, maybe 13. Uh, we went to California. My grandfather, Norman Hancock, uh, he had uh, brain cancer and he was on his deathbed. And we went to go uh, visit him and we were staying with family. And it was kind of a sad time. But uh, that's not that's what the story's about. That's just the uh, setting in which the story takes place. So I was at the hospital. You know, my grandfather, he's on his his deathbed pretty much and it's a sad time and so all the families there you know my mom my grandma uh, you know my my uncles uh, my cousins and this story involves my uncle Danny now my uncle Danny is a super cool guy he's he's passed away uh, many years back now he had multiple sclerosis which is relevant to the story so he was in a, a wheelchair uh, he'd had multiple sclerosis for a long time uh, was always I really liked Danny, you know, it, he always had great stories and he was always had a positive attitude and he was so smart and so funny. Uh, I really liked spending time with him, I had a lot of respect for him. He was a veteran, he was actually a Maroon Beret in the Air Force, which is pararescue. So in, in Vietnam he would uh, go, you know, behind enemy lines into the jungles, find pilots that had to uh, abandon their aircraft uh, and he would escort them back to safety so uh, their motto was I believe so that others may live so I mean as far as special forces it's not like a tip of the spear type thing you know he was a, a rescue so you know he saved people and didn't his function wasn't to kill it was to save anyways it's still really hard to become that sorry I'm getting sidetracked so anyways my uncle Danny he's in a wheelchair I really liked spending time with him we were all hanging out in the hospital room you know it's real somber and uh, uh, Danny and his family were staying at a hotel across the street from the, uh, the hospital. And I liked spending time with them, and he was ready to go, go back. Uh, you know, it's just getting late at night. It's, the sun's down. It's nighttime. And I was like, hey, I'll, I'll take Danny back to his room. You know, he was in a wheelchair. No big deal. Now, in my defense, I have zero experience pushing wheelchairs or anything like that. Uh, you know, his kids, John and uh, Justin and Jason and Selena and Shauna, you know, they, they had to assist him, uh, you know, through their childhood and into their teen years and uh, young adult lives. And they were really good about, you know, they knew exactly what to do and, you know, all the protocols. And I, I hadn't really thought, oh, this is going to be difficult. I'm just pushing a wheelchair. So anyways... Uh, we go out what is the uh, the entrance to the emergency room because that's the direction of the hotel. So I come out and there's an ambulance right in front of the door where the wheelchair ramp is, right? So I can't push him down there, so I figure there's probably another wheelchair ramp. It's totally a hospital. Uh, we'll just walk down the sidewalk. So I'm pushing him down the sidewalk, we're talking, um, and there's a street light that's out. So it's pretty dark. And I get to the edge of the sidewalk, and I mean, it's really, really dark. And I could have sworn, I swear I could have sworn, there was a little wheelchair ramp off the edge of this sidewalk into the parking lot. So I push him over what ended up being a curb. And the front wheels, the wheelchair, drop down, right? So now he's leaning forward. Uh, he had a strap that he usually had on, but you know, he was just hanging out and he wasn't doing anything. It, it, the point is it wasn't on. So my first instinct when those wheels went down, I was like, I can't let this thing tip. So I, I slammed my feet into the, the back wheels of the wheelchair and I grabbed the handles and I just, I leaned back with all the weight and strength my little 120 pound frame could provide. You know, actually at the time, I think I was about 100 pounds. Yeah, I was probably like 95, 100 pounds. I was a pretty small kid. So anyways, I think I got this. You know, it's not moving forward. And then Danny started falling out of his wheelchair forward. You know, and he's, he's pretty advanced stage MS at this point. 
you know, uh, so he had an electric wheelchair he used sometimes too, and he could just control like the little joystick. He couldn't walk, he couldn't support himself. Um, and he started falling forward. <sighs> Anyways, it, it makes me cringe to think about this, so it's a hard story to tell. Anyways, he fell forward and, you know, let out this long, no, as he just slowly fell. And I, I tried to reach around, I tried to grab him, but you know, he's a full grown man. I'm this little 95 pound kid. Long story short, he face planted into the asphalt. Uh, and it just split his head right open. I mean, right across the forehead, this big giant gash, he starts bleeding. Luckily, I mean, I'm literally <laughs> 30 feet from the entrance to the emergency room. So there was some EMTs and nurses, you know, because it was at Amazon out there, and they saw it happen, so they came running over. They rolled him over, you know, supported his neck, and immediately he's like, I'm fine, just hit my head a bit. It's no big deal. It's okay, Travis. It was an accident. You no, know, it's just a super gracious guy about it, you know. I, and I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm just like, I'm freaking out. I'm like in shock. <sighs> just talking about it takes me back to that state of mind. It felt literally like garbage. Just horrible. I mean, here's my uncle who I love, and I just dumped him right on his face. <sighs> anyway, so. They took him inside, they stitched him up, and uh, and he was he was okay. You know, he didn't have any he didn't have a concussion or anything like that. Like I said, this dude is tough as nails. I mean, even with MS, you know, the guy just had an indomitable spirit, and uh, you know, forgave me and said, "Don't worry about it. It's okay." Uh, then right after that, so he had a uh, like a care worker that was with him. It was this uh, real nice gentleman maybe in his mid-20s, a uh, real cool guy, and, uh, you know, he could see that I was freaking out, so he took me out in the parking lot with the wheelchair, because now Danny's in a hospital bed getting stitches, and uh, he showed me, like, okay, here's where the straps are, you know, and he's like, whenever you're, whenever you're going down a curb, he's like, you want to turn around backwards and pull them down, and, uh, you know, this and that, and, and taught me how to, how to move someone in a wheelchair, you know, which, in retrospect, I mean, I, I did volunteer for this. So it's not like uh, I should have I should have asked. But you know, as a kid, you don't you don't think something's you think it's easy. It's just pushing a wheelchair. How hard can that be? And then you dump your you know quadriplegic uncle on his face in the asphalt, and you just feel like an asshole. You know, the the real downside of that whole situation was like me being an awkward kid, having a lot of anxiety uh, for years later, anytime I was around him, I would just feel a lot of shame and and really kind of was was distant after that. And I regret that a lot. Uh, because I, 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 I really enjoyed listening to his stories and talking to him. But uh, yeah, that anxiety and, and awkwardness uh, inhibited my ability to spend quality time with him after that. Which sucks. Anyways, it's kind of a sad story, but in some ways it's it's slightly humorous. I mean, when family members tell the story, it's something they, they laugh about now, and I haven't quite got to the point where I can laugh about it. I still get, like, I'm having anxiety right now just talking about this. But, uh, you know, and, and ev everyone was really gracious and nice, you know, no one no one yelled at me, you know, no one was mean to me, it, it, all my cousins were pretty cool about it, um, I think they could tell that I was upset enough, if I would have been like, well, he should have been strapped in, or making excuses, that's not the case, I, I felt pretty damn horrible, so, um, uh, yeah, so, lesson learned from that, <laughs> Make sure you know what the hell you're doing before you agree to do something. And uh, ask questions if you're unsure. And maybe ask questions if you think you know what you're doing, if it's something you've never done before. And also, when someone forgives you, like, take it. Uh, let that, you know, accept that forgiveness and move forward. And don't, don't let something you've done that other people don't hold against you uh, keep you 
like held back from those people, you know? So don't punish yourself for too long. As I say that, I'm still like, oh God, I'm just cringing inside thinking about this. So maybe I gotta listen to my own advice and you know, forgive myself for it. I mean, it's not like, it was just stitches. There's no long-term damage. Uh, it was just a, it was just a, I mean, it was a bad week. You know, my grandpa's dying, I'm dropping, dropping uh, my uncle on his face and splitting his head open. Uh, in fact, it, you know, some people talk about how uh, trauma can affect memory. So the reason this is on my mind is I just recently, uh, I was talking about my grandpa with my mom and and uh, I realized I hadn't talked with my grandpa's side of the family in forever. So I asked for a number and I called, uh, I guess it would be my first cousin once removed, uh, my mom's cousin, Mark. And we stayed at his house in Modesto uh, when when uh, we went to go visit my grandpa in the hospital. He had been out in California working with his brother, Donnie. And, uh, you know, he was in really good health. They'd been playing volleyball the day before and we're gonna be playing volleyball that night when he uh, collapsed from, you know, he had had lung cancer that was undiagnosed and it spread to his brain and then pretty much was nothing you could do at that point. Anyways, and, uh, and I have zero, literally zero recollection of staying in his house. None. None whatsoever. And he, he is a really cool guy. I talked to him last night for like 45 minutes and it's, he seems like someone I'd want to remember. And then talking with my youngest brother, AJ, who's, you know, two, four, six, he's six and a half, ah, six years younger than me. Um, he remembers it. You know, God, I was like 13 when this happened. So AJ's like seven. He remembers his house, he remembers his organ, he remembers he had like a, a sand rail or something and a boat and, you know, Mark's a pretty well-off guy. He's got a pretty cool house from what I understand and, uh, it, you know, has a lot of cool toys because he's a successful guy. But like I said, I remember none of that. I remember two things about that trip. I remember talking with my grandpa and uh, in his kind of uh, morphium-induced delirium, uh, talking about saying weird things like, I've always seen the horses running in your eyes, which is, I mean, I wonder what was going through his mind when he said that, and then he'd slip between kind of saying strange things like that to then uh, talking like he's managing a construction site. My grandfather was a crane operator for Chef Steel for a long time. He was really good at what he did. A lot of the buildings in downtown, he actually, uh, you know, was a part of the erection of all those steel structures which is cool, so every time I drive through downtown, I think about my grandpa. Uh, so I remember that, you know, I remember my grandpa saying, we got a, we got a pit coming up, check the rigging, you know, all right, we're gonna do this, and just talking construction shop as if he's, you know, in a crane operating. And then me dropping Danny on his face. Literally, I remember nothing, nothing else my entire trip. And I have a fantastic memory. I mean, I remember my second birthday, you know, that's like, I'm one of the few people I know who remembers that far back. I remember uh, houses and pets when I was a little kid. I remember very specific instances going way back. You know, I remember teachers in third grade. I remember, you know, the classes and homework assignments from second grade. Uh, and just to have this whole week of my life where I remember a few sentences of my grandpa and dropping my uncle on his face. You know, it was a pretty traumatic experience for me. It really should have been more traumatic for him, but <laughs> it really, I think I was the one more traumatized by it. You know, he had an injury, but I, uh, I was a little scarred as a child by that whole thing, so. Uh, yeah, so anyways, again, this is one of those videos that's turning way longer than I mean to. I, I have a tendency to ramble on when I start telling stories. All right, stay in your lane, semi-truck, weirdo. Sorry, I am driving. It's not much traffic, but the semi-truck behind me was being all all crazy. Anyways, so how do I want to end this video? What's the point? Well, like I said before, you know, be sure to forgive yourself. Don't let your own, like, regret uh, affect your future. Because now, at the time, you know, I regretted doing that and I felt awkward. And I really wish I just would have pushed through that and not been so awkward and standoffish around my Uncle Danny after that because, you know, he was a really amazing guy. He was super smart. 
you know, he had he was a freaking war hero and you know rescued people in Vietnam and and had really interesting political views. You know, I'm I lean libertarian in a lot of ways. I'm an independent, but you know, he was big time libertarian. And it would you know now being more interested in politics and as adult, it would be really nice to have a little bit more memory of his kind of uh, insight and thoughts on you know politics and governance and life in general. But yeah, I let that I let my own like anxiety and awkwardness prevent that. And I think that's a bigger regret than than dropping him dropping him on his head. And if I think that. If I hadn't allowed it to affect me for those, you know, what was it? I think he passed when I was living in California. I, I can't remember the exact year. So, you know, I had maybe another 10 years. I could have been talking with him a lot more. I mean, I did still talk to him. I didn't just run away when he came around. Or I just, when I was younger, before that incident, I would plop down next to him and we'd talk video games and we'd talk, you know, he just had... You know, I mean, in his state where, you know, he was in a wheelchair and, you know, bedridden for the most part, you know, communicating and talking was was what he did. And he loved to do that, you know. Uh, and so I think if I hadn't allowed that to happen, I would have just pushed through it, you know, got past my awkwardness, talked to them, just like we used to before this incident. I wouldn't have so much regret about it now. And I might be laughing about it like everyone else can. But, uh, yeah, so... You know, I guess I always try to put in a little lesson at the end of these videos. And that, that would be the lesson, you know. Don't hold yourself back. And don't beat yourself up. And uh, don't push someone off a curve in a wheelchair. Because that shit sucks, let me tell you. It's, uh... uh yeah. Slow motion. Just falling. Uh, no! Bam! Shit, that sucked. It's horrible. Like, one of the worst things I've seen. And it's, like I said, it's not like he broke his neck or broke his arm or cracked his skull. Just got a cut. And he needs some stitches, you know? And he's a tough dude. It's a real tough dude. For him, it was probably, it's probably nothing. But, yeah. So anyways, that's a story of how I pushed my quadriplegic uncle with multiple sclerosis off a curb and split his skull open. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, and, and for those people who do take care of family members who have, you know, medical conditions and they need a lot of help, uh, in wheelchairs, they need picked up and lifted, so much respect. It's a hard, hard thing to do. And to all my cousins, John, Jason, Justin, Selena, Shauna, I mean, I'm, I can't imagine how hard that was. But you guys did it. So, I mean... Props to you guys. That's cool that you guys were able to take care of him like that, you know? And uh, you guys never even complained when I was kids. You guys just did it, you know? Maybe, maybe you complain sometimes, and that's okay. People got to vent, right? But I never heard it. You just did it. And my cousins, the result, were strong. I mean, uh, John and Jason and, and Justin, those guys, I mean, Danny wasn't a huge guy, but he was still a full-grown man. And, I mean, these guys, when, when I was a kid, they could... You know, I mean, I was a toothpick twig. I mean, at the same age, and Justin was younger than me. Jason was only maybe a year older, probably less. And I mean, they would pick him up out of bed and they'd put him in his wheelchair and get him strapped in. I mean, those guys are just strong physically and mentally. So, props to you guys. I do remember that. I think about that sometimes. So, I always say I'm going to end the video and then ramble on for like four more minutes. So, yeah, that's my story of uh, my time in California, my grandfather passing and messing up my uncle's face and uh, my thoughts on that. So, hope you enjoyed my video. You guys have a, have a good day. I'll make a more positive one another day. Thanks, guys.